Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. In today's episode, we'll be examining simulating cyber attacks on nuclear command and control NC2 facilities. We also invite you to check out and discover additional original CSIAC content that is available at our website. That's www.csiac.org. During the height of the Cold War, we identified appropriate survivability responses in the event of an attack on U.S. soil. Drills were practiced and protocols rehearsed. The biggest fear in those days was mutually assured destruction from nuclear warfare. In today's digital world, military and strategic systems are constantly under cyber attack. Many of these attacks are windows for opportunistic profit-seeking hackers. Some are due to negligent security postures, inadvertent errors, or existing vulnerabilities. Many attacks are operations conducted by adversarial military and intelligence organizations. Cyber attacks on critical infrastructure are the major threat in today's world that we are most likely to encounter. Within the nuclear realm, the threat of cyber attacks is relatively high due to advanced persistent threats, also known as APTs. Are the current survivability precautions enough to thwart a cyber attack from issuing nuclear launch commands? Could corrupted data files give the erroneous impression that we were under a nuclear attack? The clandestine nature of network reconnaissance, remote executability, and ease of access to sophisticated malware and hacking tools means there will be little to no defense against some types of cyber warfare. The time window for reacting to an incoming nuclear strike is about three to six minutes. This makes it exceptionally difficult to calculate network resiliency and how to harden networks to be able to withstand a cyber attack. The National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2019 authorizes the U.S. to take appropriate and proportional action through cyberspace to disrupt, defeat, and deter systematic and ongoing attacks. Threat and vulnerability analysis provide invaluable insights, but without guidance or protocols, determining the nature and intent of the attack are left to experience and leadership alone. Let's consider the Shamoon and Stuxnet cyber attacks. Given a similar attack, it's uncertain how much data would be available to investigate the threat, or how quickly the system would be operational again. How should a government respond? Without clear understanding and situational awareness, decision-making suffers due to uncertainty and time-constrained environments. Why is there so much confusion in the aftermath of a cyber breach? What can be learned from historical protocols to help inform decision makers today? We have evaluated two attack scenarios, a nuclear strike on a nuclear command and control facility, as well as a cyber attack on the same facility. Given a nuclear strike, it is not terribly difficult to determine intent. It is likely that more attacks are imminent with a goal of regime decapitation. In cyberspace, however, 
determining what constitutes a battlefield preparatory exercise from an intelligence collection activity is extremely difficult. There is also the off chance that the cyber event did not achieve its goal or somehow was a mistake. Intent is much more subjective in cyberspace. Proportionality is not in question in the nuclear realm. Doctrine states that a nuclear strike will be met with a comparable nuclear response. Unfortunately, it is often difficult to achieve consensus on what con constitutes a proportionate reaction to a foreign presence on NC2 networks. In considering attribution, all the variables rely on knowing the attackers. Presently, only nine nations are known to possess nuclear weapons making attribution of a nuclear attack much more plausible in a short space of time. In the cyber domain, however, this is orders of magnitude more difficult to achieve with certainty. This is due to the large number of nation states with offensive cyber capabilities. We examine these variables as they pertain to the two attack scenarios and show where policies can be added or automated. By examining security protocols for missile silo networks and physical grounds, and identifying the stakeholders, we identify survivability gaps and highlight areas in need of streamlining options in the decision-making process. Our goal is to produce a logic-based decision tree model that will aid in simulations and strategic exercise planning. War games and if this, then that hypotheticals have proven to be extremely valuable tools. In the nuclear world, predetermined courses of action and communication links are critical to stakeholders making fully informed decisions. Uniform messaging to would-be attackers and deterrent stratagems are important for a strong defense. The survivability of national assets to withstand cyber attacks depends on it. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content useful and informative. If you would like to provide us with feed feedback, please comment on this video or visit our website at www csiac.org where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up. Visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.